Hello, my name is Scott Sandusky. Today I'm with Shannon, Na, and Sebastian. Today we're going to talk about ArcGIS Maps and Microsoft Integration, Office, Power BI, and SharePoint. Let's get started. First of all, we develop this, these products together, uh, Esri and Microsoft. The primary development team is, is in Redlands and, and we do um, build these products at Esri, but we work with Microsoft. Um, we don't just, you know, throw the code over the wall and hope everything works together, but we, we are integrated uh, co and collaborate together on this. The goal, or one of the goals I should say, um, is to really make the value of spatial accessible to everybody. We don't think that, you know, the value of spatial should be uh, pent up and contained by just a few GIS analysts, but why not get it out there and expose to everybody in an org? If you take a look at an org, there's a lot of people, not just the GIS department. And that org is filled with people who know nothing about GIS, but they know a lot about their domain um, that they uh, are, are experts in, whatever that core business is. And then there's those people who analyze that core business. And then, you know, if they're lucky, they have a GIS department, sure, but it's probably a few people comparatively. And then maybe they have a couple data scientists who, you know, do the Python and R scripting and um, some more cutting edge stuff. So one way we can uh, really expose everybody to spatial is to embed spatial in the products they're using. And what better way to do that than with some of the most prevalent products out there on the market, SharePoint. You know, who um, it's, it's hugely uh, widely adopted by organizations white labeled we have a, a SharePoint site at, at Esri we don't call it SharePoint we call it compass so you know behind the scenes it, it is definitely SharePoint but everybody uses it um, same thing with Excel who doesn't use Excel right why not push uh, spatial into that um, app um, Power BI arguably the world's most common or popular BI tool out there spatial should be one of the forefront uh, capabilities and so um, that's really the goal of the products that we're talking about today. And with these three, you'll start to notice some patterns as we go through the, the demonstrations and deep dives on them. Um, I'll just kind of cover some of these patterns. And as I do so, um, keep in mind that, you know, it, there, might be, there, there's, there are definitely differences between all of them. Um, and, you know, there might be some differences in these uh, checkbox capabilities, if you will. But more broadly speaking, and what they do allow you to do is really um, fuse together your tabular uh, business data with your GIS data in one spot. And, you know, neither is really like an afterthought or shouldn't be. Um, it it um, is being able to work with both types of content. Next, uh, types of users. So you see this pattern across all three products where there's this person creating or developing or analyzing or being an administrator in the case of SharePoint. Um, and they're really setting things up. They're, they're authoring um, the map or configuring the map. And then they wanna get it out there, have it more widely used and appreciated by those viewers or consumers. And that sharing and publishing model um, is, is something in, in common um, you know and there's differences in that share sharing and publishing model you know obviously between um, diff the different products but it, you know again uh, more high-level uh, topics here mapping tabular business data absolutely sometimes you know this is called geocoding or geo enablement uh, location enablement take those lat long coordinates and put them on the map make them points Geocoding, whether it's um, you know addresses, street addresses, and putting that down to a rooftop or driveway point, points of interest, well-known buildings, um, city centroids, throw them against the geocoder. It'll return the location on the map. And you shouldn't be able to just only enable points. No, this is boundaries too. So well-known states countries, zip codes, provinces, um, those are easily spatially enabled. This last point here with custom geometries, this is one of the more advanced spatial enablement um, mapping techniques and 
Um, you might have to jump out to one of the other ArcGIS products to do that sometimes, but you know, just to, to highlight that that is something um, that's a need uh, every, commonly, definitely by lots of organizations, is to not just uh, map to well-known addresses, coordinates, or, or, or uh, areas, but also custom areas, trade areas, uh, work territories, basically doing a spatial join to um, even line uh, geometries. Next, this concept of enrichment, and that's um, extending upon what we had previously talked about. Once your tabular data is now spatially enabled, you can append or spatially join new variables onto it. We in the, the cloud, Esri, um, have environmental, demographic, and economic variables that are extremely valuable. So you basically um, overlay the two, relate them, and then you now have these new variables on your data so you can do more with it. It's pretty powerful. Another thing that you can do is basically make a data sandwich, right? So you have this map and you can l start layering content on top of each other. At the very top, you likely have your data that you've just put on the map. At the very bottom, you have a base map. Now this base map typically is uh, designed and curated by Esri, but you can bring your own, bring your own base map if you have it. But this is things like imagery and a street map. You know, maybe it's a dark gray canvas. And in the middle of those two pieces of bread, you got, you got some of that uh, meat that's coming from your own organization. If you have a GIS deployment, if you have one, you've already invested a lot of, uh, you know, time and resources and, and money into maintaining those geo assets, if you will, the um, the content that um, your GIS department uh, has has produced. Use it. Living Atlas. Now this is um, content that Esri manages, maintains. That's we, we purchase it, it's from the open source, uh, we've gone through a validation process, we spend uh, really millions of dollars every year making the living atlas, this living breathing thing for just all types of geospatial data. And it's really helpful to have that for context to see where your, your own data compares to it. And as well in ArcGIS Online, a lot of organizations, they freely share their authoritative data. So that's there for you to use also. Would it, would it be would, it wouldn't be very useful to map your data if you couldn't make it look pleasing um, styling it cartographically modeling it this is the transparency the color the symbols really making it it's a communication method for for, um, for communicating how your data should be represented and now that's not just limited to styling the map but also authoring pop-ups when somebody clicks on that that feature, what type of information should be returned? Uh, does it support labels on the map? Yeah, all those things are possible. It's not just a static map that we're making either, but interactive. So you should be able to, like we said, click on a feature and a pop-up comes up, but also interact with the tabular data. So if you are in Excel and you make a selection in Excel, that point should be selected in the map and vice versa. If you select some features in the map, it should be reflected in the table. We do have a little bit of spatial analysis within these products, uh, but it's primarily mapping. Um, this light spatial analysis capability, like drive times, buffers, heat maps, hotspots, find similar, this time series animation and infographics, all this stuff is very valuable, but hopefully you don't think that's all that's available. Just know that that's just a taste of the capabilities that are available. Um, in, in other uh, GIS apps, Insights, Pro, ArcGIS Online Map Viewer, things like that. Next, we're going to do a deep dive on these three products, and we're going to start off with Maps for Office. So, Maps for Office is a plugin to Excel and PowerPoint. You download it from esri.com uh, slash um, basically just Maps for Office in a product page. I don't know what the exact URL is. But once it's in there and installed, you bet you can map your data without leaving Excel, bring in other authoritative GIS content, and author a really compelling looking map, and you can share it with PowerPoint. So you can have that map you just authored 
in your presentation. Mapping the data is pretty easy. We support cells, named ranges, and tables. We talked about the addresses, coordinates, and area support. And that reference content, yeah, you can bring it in from your ArcGIS Online or Enterprise Org or the content that we host in, in um, the Living Atlas. Style it the way you want. With smart mapping, that is um, basically the ability for us to have smart defaults, intelligent defaults. So we try to make, uh, make it easier for you. Just the first way that it appears on the map, have it look good. You, you don't have to stick with that. You can always change it. And then once you do design your map in a way that you're proud of, get it out there to PowerPoint. Next, uh, Shannon is actually going to walk us through a demonstration of what I just talked about. And in this scenario, she's going to have a, uh, a look at power plants and windmill facilities across the U.S., basically taking a look at how are these things distributed and how do they relate to U.S. population and demographics. Now, this is something that maybe an uh, investment, uh, a private company might look at for investment, or maybe even a government entity for understanding supply and demand and risk. So here I've opened my power plant Excel worksheet. I have my data here um, in a table. I have a list of business names, addresses, cities, state, zip, a few other columns of data, and my sales volume. I'll go ahead and select my ArcGIS Maps tab and select Sign In. And for per demo purposes, I'm going to be an investor from Yucca Power Plant Company based out of Yuma, Arizona. The goal is to look for power plant and windmill distribution as it relates to population and demographics. My goal is to fulfill potential investment opportunities and to help predict future supply and demand. So let me go ahead and add a map. The smart mapping capabilities within ArcGIS Maps for Office add-in will read my table and auto-populate what it feels is best. I'll go ahead and add my data. And for my power plant data, I want to make sure that I know what I'm looking at. So I'm going to rename it to power plants. I'm also going to change the layer styling. I'm looking more specifically for single symbol under these advanced options. And I am specifically looking for firefly symbology in a green color. As you can see, the light green contrast on the light gray canvas base map does not quite complement each other too well so I'm going to change the base map to the dark gray canvas and while I'm in here I'm going to go ahead and rename my project to the Yucca Power Plant Project I need to go ahead and add my windmill data. So I'm going to add data from ArcGIS, which accesses my content from ArcGIS online organizational account. I'm going to go to my groups and look for my windmill data and select the green check mark, which adds my data here on the map. I'd also like to change the symbology, so I'll go to my layer settings and I am going to style by heat map. I think heat map will give the best representation of windmill density. Okay, and now that I have my map looking and feeling like I'd like, I 
I want to configure my pop-ups. I want to be able to know what I'm looking at and how it's going to relate to the rest of my map. So I'll select my pop-up settings. I want to select business, name as my header. I want the city and state to reflect, so I'll uncheck these other options and my sales volume. So now that I've configured my pop-up, I'll go ahead and enrich my data with population. I'll select enrich data. Population is what I'm interested in, and I'm looking for the 2019-2014 annual growth rate. I'll select next. I'll keep radius for my study area, but I will change my distance to 60 mile radius instead of a 20 mile radius. I'll continue with creating a new column and add data to my worksheet. You'll notice that the enriched data is appended to the last column of my table. And let me go ahead and filter here from largest to smallest. And I'm going to scroll down here to California since this is my investment area of interest and it looks like Colmac Energy Incorporated could be a match. I will go to right click and go to location. And I'd like to quickly identify here what business I'm looking at without having to look in my Excel spreadsheet. So let me enable labels. And I want to configure these labels so that I can clearly see them and read them. And I'll make it a size 12 font and a size green to match my Firefly symbology and change my text alignment to center. And since I like the look and feel of this, I'll go ahead and share my map back to my organization. The title of my shared map project will be auto-populated. I will add some tags such as sales, windmills, power, and population. And the summary of this map will be highest projected population growth in California. And I'm going to share this to my relevant group, which is the Yucca Power Plant Company. My Yucca Power Plant project was successfully shared, so now I want to go ahead and begin to create my slide deck. I'll select Create Slide. This captures a static image that is put in PowerPoint. This is my PowerPoint, sorry, Power Plant. Um, but California power plant option one investment op option one let me add a new blank slide here I'll go to the ArcGIS maps tab select sign in Let's try that one more time. Same thing, this is power plant in California. This is possible option investment opportunity one. Let me insert a blank slide. I'll go to the ArcGIS Maps tab. Again, I have to sign in. can use my enterprise account. And I'll select add map. And here I'm going to look for the Yucca Power Plant project. And for this particular slide, I'd like to show, I'd like to add a legend 
change it from light to dark to stick with my theme. I like the fill right layout. I'll go ahead and move my ledge into where it's, a, it's pleasing and set my map also where it looks good. And once I am done with analyzing my Excel data, creating my presentation, when I'm in presentation mode, I'm able to click on the unlock map here and go into what we call live mode. I'm able to scroll around, navigate the map together with my team, continue to compile and look at the different data so that I can make an informed investment decision. Thank you. All right, thank you, Shannon. Okay, so what do we see? We saw how we could map tabular business data, put that Excel data on a map, style it, create pop-ups, bring in that reference content, layer it, and then ultimately uh, just give it in a presentation, in a slideshow. We're going to move on to SharePoint, do our SharePoint deep dive here. And SharePoint, ArcGIS Maps for SharePoint allows you to location enable or map your tabular SharePoint content. If you SharePoint list with zip codes or addresses, you should be able to map it, and this was, is what it allows you to do. You also can, similarly to Office, pull in reference content. And this last thing, geotagging and searching documents and pictures. This is really powerful stuff that um, allows you to find your documents in a different way than before, uh, see it on a map, understand where documents uh, are, are related to. Uh, your actual assets in the field. Now this capability I'm about to talk about here, this is something that more of a, an administrator would do. Somebody who's the admin of your SharePoint site or maybe like an analyst. But it's setting up your workflow and the SharePoint lists can be automatically um, pointed to and, and can be pointed to and automatically updated in the map when your data changes. So if your list has a, a new record or if that uh, address has changed, the map should reflect it. And that's what this does. You can read that list and um, incorporate this workflow not only with the geocoding or geo-enablement component, but also enrichment. So we had talked about appending those environmental, demographic, and economic variables onto your spatial data. You can set that up to be automated. Once you do that, this is what your viewers would see, the viewers of your SharePoint site. They're going to be able to interact completely with that map, knowing that um, you know it's coming from your SharePoint data. Geo-searching documents is, what do I mean by that? Well, it, it associates your documents with a specific GIS feature. So as an end user, I might see these assets. Maybe it's a, a, a political boundary. Um, it, it could be anything that your organization manages and maintains. See those locations on a map. Click on one given location and see the documents that are associated with it. That's new. It's different. It's, it's, it's a, a powerful way to organize content spatially. So now Nas is going to walk us through what I just talked about. And in this scenario, we're going to take a look at identifying safe communities and schools. Specifically, where are the schools? Let's compare it to crime data. And then how can we manage emergency management documents? associated with each, with each of those schools. This could be of interest to you know me and you that want to make sure that we're going to pick the safest location to live in. Or maybe a community planner who wants to understand where improvements can be made. Hello everyone, my name is Na Zhang. I'm a senior software engineer for ArcGIS Maps for SharePoint. Today I'm going to do a demo to show you how to use Maps for SharePoint to resolve our daily problems. So what is my problem today? I live in California. Let's assume I need to relocate to Chicago. 
I want to move into a safe area. And I, I have kids. I want to send my kids to school. I want to avoid high crime community and high crime school. So how can I use Maps for SharePoint to resolve my problems? Let's take a look today. Today I'm going to show you three individual demos. The number one is I'm going to show you uh, create a workflow, ArcGIS Maps workflow to geo-enable and geo-reach our SharePoint list. Here I have a SharePoint list, uh, which is the Chicago school list. I only have the address information for Chicago schools. I don't have crime information. I don't have the location information. So now I'm going to add a new workflow. From SharePoint, click List, Workflow Settings. In the Workflow Settings, you will find ArcGIS Maps and add a workflow and give a name. I'll name it as Location. And don't forget to check these two items. Once you check these two, anytime when your list gets changed, the workflow will be kicked off automatically. So here, we're going to choose World Geocoder. And now we need to choose Location Columns. Choose the one column, which is a single line address. Click Next. Next. Here we have an option to let you geo-enrich your data at the same time when you're geocoding your workflow, geocoding your data. So here we have plenty of choice. We can choose, now I'm interested in crime information, so I'm going to choose crime. And I'm going to choose personal crime index. And click next and add all the data to my system. So. This workflow will run at the back end. And because you check that two little items, so all the information will get updated all the time. And here we get the location information, we got the personal crime index information. That is how we create a geo coding and a geo enrich workflow. And here I'm going to do one more step, which is create a view. This is this standard view. Yeah, the view is in SharePoint platform itself. And I'm going to create a standard view. And this view, I'll give a name called uh, High Crime Schools. And later when I build my other apps, I, I will use this view. So I'm pretty much interested in the high crime schools. So I'm going to choose the personal crime index, which is greater than 500. Yeah, that pretty much is high crime schools. So when I click OK, I can see no school are pretty much high crime schools. So that is my first step to enable and to enrich my Chicago school list. Now I'm going to create a map to visualize my data and run the analysis. Now I'm going to choose the ArcGIS Maps in my web page, and then I'm going to know the layers. First, I'm going to know the layers from ArcGIS Online. I'm going to choose Chicago areas. And then once I know that layer, I'm going to style it a little bit. Now I rename it as areas, and I'm going to adjust the transparency a little bit. Okay, now looks good. Now let's add the data from SharePoint. I'm going to choose the Chicago schools, uh, the pre geo enabled the, the data list. Now that's my Chicago schools. I'm going to style it a little bit. Let's choose, yeah, the personal crime indexed. And I'm going to change the symbol to the circle shape. And I'm going to uh, change the color to this one. I'm going to shrink down the size a little bit. And I'm going to click, choose the reverse color and click OK. So now the red color present the high crime 
indexed, and blue color present no crime indexed. So, yeah, that's pretty much I can tell something from this map. And I'm going to run find hot spot analysis from my map. I'm going to fit in the personal crime index and I'm going to rename the layer as school safety profile. Any name will do here. So let's run the find hotspot. And that's disable the original layer. So here is my map. From this map, actually I can tell the north part of Chicago is much is safer than the south part. So if I want to choose the community to move in, I pretty much will go with the uh, north part of Chicago. Okay, now I can share my map to ArcGIS Online. So I choose share map and I give a name and share. So once I share my map to ArcGIS Online, the external user, customers, actually they can uh, access to my map, they can load my map, maybe add my map to their own uh, web page or do any analysis. So I'm going to save my map. Good. I can view the map on ArcGIS Online. Here, that's the map viewer. I can open in the map viewer. Here is my map. I can republish my map so the internal user can see my map too. The internal user in SharePoint platform can see my map. Now the last step, I'm going to show you how to geo-enable, how to geo-tagging and geo-search your documents in Maps for SharePoint. Now let's create a map, ArcGIS map search. Choose ArcGIS map search. So we create a map here and then we can choose as an administrator, I can uh, set all the geotagging attributes, all the stuff here. So let's load the layer first. I'm going to load the Chicago areas layer here. So I'm going to rename this layer areas. I'm going to style it a little bit. I'm going to adjust the transparency. And I'm going to add a layer from shell point. I'm going to choose the view I created for the high crime schools. So now I got all my high crime schools. I want them to pop up. So I'm going to style these schools. I'm going to choose red color and then let them pop up. Okay. So I'm going to shrink the size down a little bit. Very good. I'm going to relimit schools. Okay. So the next step is I'm going to set the geotagging attributes. So for the areas, when we set the geotagging attributes, which means we we want to, when we want to associate the document to this layer, the value of this uh, attributes will associate it documents with the layer. So for the school, I'm going to choose ID as the geotagging attributes. So it's very unique for each school. So I'm going to republish my map. So now. When I go to the geotag panel, I have all my documents, images here. I can attach my documents. I'm going to choose a folder. So when I drag and drop my documents, the folder to a specific area, it will associate all the files in the folder with that area. So I don't need to uh, attach them one by one. 
So I'm going to drag my folder to different areas. And then I'm going to, let's take a look. That's the tags, yeah. So all the files in the folder have no tags created. I'm going to drag a file to a specific area. As we can see, once we tag that file, we will have the text populated for that document. That one is the uh, ID of that specific school, another one is the name of the area. Yes, that's the two tags. So once we done that, then our viewer come over here, they can actually search the documents by just simply click on the area. So those are the documents associated with that area. The tips for call 911. If you click on the school, we can get a specific documents for that school. So that's how we geotag and geosearch our documents. This feature actually provides a very simple, easy way to help us to manage our documents spatially. So today, I introduced the maps for SharePoint. I highlight three major features. Number one is uh, geo-enable and geo-enrich our SharePoint data list. Number two is visualization. It's mapped the content uh, to the map and run the analysis. Number three is uh, geotagging and geo-search our documents. Now, let's back to Scott. Thank you. All right, thank you, Na. So, what do we see? Well, we saw how we could do that uh, workflow. We enabled that workflow, right, where the SharePoint list had that spatial uh, location uh, tabular data in it. We were able to map it with that workflow and not only do that, but you can geo-enable that, or I'm sorry, geo-enrich it if you want. Once we have that map created, pull in reference content, have more control over that map with the styling and pop-ups really spend some time making it look nice and authoring it. And then that other capability we had talked about, the ability to map your documents um, and associate them with, with features in your GIS so that as an end user, you can easily find those documents and search for those documents. Let's move on to our third and final product, ArcGIS Maps for Power BI. And this is built in within uh, Power BI. So, um, I said that Office, you might Maps for Office, you need to download and install that plugin. With Maps for Power BI, it's a little bit different. We ship in the box, so you don't need to install anything. But similarly to the other two products, you can location enable your tabular business data. You can pull in other content for context and create beautiful looking maps in your reports. And these maps are interactive, remember, they're not just static. Now, there's two ways you can use ArcGIS Maps for Power BI. As a Power BI user, you open it up, open Power BI up, and boom, you hit the ArcGIS button, start using it. Now, that's got a limited set of capabilities. If you want to do more, you need to log in first. Maps for Power BI allows you to log in with your Enterprise ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise named user. And if you have the license, um, you have more capabilities. How much more capabilities? What more can you do? It comes down to what content that you can use. Um, Esri curated content, there's a lot more of that available with the named user. You have With the named user, you have access to your organization's GIS content. That's extremely important. So if your um, organization has a GIS and you want to pull in those data layers, those geo assets, if you will, that you created, you do need the named user login. There's also a difference in the number of geocodes, and um, I'm not going to go through everything here in detail, but it uh, kind of comes down to that. We recently had a release a few weeks ago where we did announce support for Enterprise. Arches Enterprise is in final. Uh, it had been out there in uh, public preview for a while, but now this is in final. And we had heard a lot of users with the need for the ability to have multiple mapping layers, multiple reference layers in the visual now it's there so you have multiple layers in the map and uh, that's managed through a layer list or like a table of contents 
Next, Sebastian is going to walk us through what I was just talking about, and specifically um, in a park and camping uh, facility scenario, taking a look at you know which parks and camping facilities have the best and worst ratings. Are any of these at risk for wildfire? And I, as a you know a, a person who likes camping, I might be interested in this. Yeah, I want to make sure that I'm um, not at risk of uh, fire and uh, want to have a, a good experience. And then also, you know, people that manage these facilities would definitely be of interest to see how they could better improve performance. Thank you, Scott. Hello, everyone. My name is Sebastian. Today, we're going to be going over our Esri Maps for Power BI visual. As you can see on screen, we have our Power BI report. This report consists of our California Campgrounds data set. This data set, as Scott had mentioned, is a data set that I can view as a user to see where I want to be able to go camping and where that is associated with California fire facilities, as well as the fire severity zones and how they're associated with one another, as well as trying to understand which ones are highly rated, which ones are rated the lowest. We do have ratings, as you can see on screen, anywhere between one and five, one being the best, five being the worst. So right now, I myself want to view these data sets for the campgrounds within the central and northern area of California. We do have the California fire facilities. Let's compare that. So you can see we have these points all associated to these different locations within that specific layer that we have. I'm going to go ahead and toggle the visibility of that layer and toggle the visibility of our California fire severity zones. We can now compare the fire severity zones to those campsites as well. This will put together to have a better understanding of what campground would be best to camp out at. We also have a table that breaks down the city, the name, and the rating of these campgrounds, as well as a line chart and a bar chart to break down the ratings of each of these different types of locations. If I go ahead and click on the 93 located areas that are rated at number one, we can see where they're located based off of the fire severity areas or we can associate our line chart to see where are our higher rated areas. Now, I want to go ahead and compare those areas with our fire, California fire facilities. Once again, we'll choose the number one rated area. We'll zoom in in order to activate that layer. And we can see these specific areas that are rated at number one are located moderately near a lot of the different facilities um, that we have. Now let's compare that to our campgrounds that are rated at a five. A little less, though we can see that they do have some locations dependent on it. Now these ratings could be anywhere between the experience that individuals had or possibly the safety. I specifically myself want to view the safety of it. Hence the comparison to the facilities and the fire severities of those zones. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and create this Power BI report. Now we'll go ahead and move into a blank area. We're going to start with the California Campgrounds data set. Now we're going to populate our visual with the ArcGIS maps for Power BI. As you can see, we have our ArcGIS maps for Power BI visual with three different connections. ArcGIS Enterprise for access to our portal accounts. ArcGIS Online to be able to access your ArcGIS organizational accounts and the standard account that way you can create mapping visuals within Power BI. I'm going to go ahead and log into my portal account under ArcGIS Enterprise. I will now log in. Now, as you can see, we are signed in to our ArcGIS Enterprise portal account. From there, we can begin adding our single line address. Single line address is the campgrounds and where they are located within Central and Northern California. We now see that the map visual has been populated with our points. I'm going to go ahead and drag this and center it to about a little over half so that can be the more prominent part of our report. Next, I'd like to begin and edit this report. In order to create a better, visual-pleasing map, I'll begin with a base map. 
I'll start with a dark gray, dark gray base map so that it, it can have a better pop to the points that we have available. I want to go ahead and include the country set to the United States because sometimes, depending on the data set, it could have points located in different areas of the country of the world. For our map theme, I want to create a location only setup. So next we'll move into our symbol style. What I want to do is maybe increase this transparency for these points to roughly, maybe let's do 20. And I want to keep them at a circle. And while I'm working, I want to zoom into that layer, which we can do through the layer list. Perfect. Next, I want to adjust the color. Create a custom color, maybe something similar to Power BI. A Power BI blue. It's usually prominent throughout the software. Perfect. I'm going to lower the transparency a little bit, probably back to about 30. And we'll set the outline thickness as well and the outline transparency. Perfect. Those points have a better visual than we had before. Now I'm going to go ahead and add our reference layers. These reference layers that we had seen before on our finalized report will be a mixture of reference layers that I have saved within my portal account, as well as a reference layer that I'll be accessing from our public ArcGIS content. First, let's go ahead and add my reference layer that I have set within my account. I will look up the CAL FIRE facilities. Perfect, have that saved within my content. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. As you can see, we begin to populate that layer on our map and we can see the associated points to those facilities. Now what I wanna do is I wanna go back into my layer list and adjust this correctly so that we can have our points prominently up top. If you scroll down, we can also view all the different symbols that will be added onto our map. As I said before, this layer does have a rule set to it. And if we zoom in, we can have the symbols pop up. If we zoom out, they'll be set to that rule as it was how it was made where they won't show up. This will have a better pleasing visual within the report. What I want to go ahead next is view my public ArcGIS content that is available to anyone with an ArcGIS account. Here I will search the California Fire Severity Zones. All right, have it right there. I'll go ahead and add this as well. As you can see, once we add that, it begins to be populated onto the map. First off, I wanna go ahead and lower this so that once again, we can have the single line addresses of the campgrounds most prominent on top. And then next, we'll zoom to that layer. Now, you can see it's quite populated, though we can toggle the layer visual. That way, we can sort through our points and compare to the fire severity as well as the locations of the facilities or locate the facilities within those fire um, severity zones. Next, I want to go back to my report. First off, before I begin to edit it, I want to make sure that that's centered perfect. Now I want to go ahead and include a table. This table will break down the city, the name, and the ratings of each of these individual campgrounds. Perfect. Now, as I can see, I have a list of my different campgrounds, all of their individual ratings, and this will be associated with the different points that we have on our map. Before that, we want to include a bar chart. This bar chart will break down the rating and the name of each of these campgrounds. So we can see what's highly rated to what's lowest rated. Perfect. I also want to add a line chart in order to better visualize those ratings. I'll add the same for the ratings over the names. As you can see, we have a large amount of number one rated campgrounds and we can see the slow decline to which ones are rated out of five, which would not be the best. Now, overall, we do have our Power BI report somewhat completed. 
before that, I want to be able to add a little bit of an aesthetic. So we'll change the name here to California Campgrounds. As well as adding a second page with another visual where we could possibly create a comparison to some other data. Once we report back to this different page, we can see that all of our data is still available. I want to go ahead and change these names as well. Have this as our, our final California campgrounds. Perfect. Now, with a setup report, let's go ahead and have that in a reading view. Save it first. Save the report as our California campgrounds. And their ratings. Now we have a Power BI report comparable to what we created before. Now, as a user, I want to go ahead and see the integration of our maps for Power BI. I personally have visited a location in Stillwater, in the Stillwater Regional Cove Park, and I want to go ahead and see where is the uh, rating for that and the possible fire severity for it, and maybe any fire locations. I'm going to go ahead and set this by name. Let's go to Stillwater. Perfect. We see the Stillwater Regional Cove. As you can see, here's our point located right along the coast. I want to compare it to the fire facilities located around there. There are a few fire facilities that we have available in case of any emergencies. Though, now let's compare this to our fire severity. Luckily, it's in a moderate to high area, though it will be located along the coast which we shouldn't have any issue. <laughs> and go ahead and zoom back to our layer. Perfect. We'll clear this layer out so that we can have our points as our main view. Now I want to have a comparison to where are the least rated campgrounds. As I can see, we have roughly 67 of those can see their names and the cities they're located in. Let's turn on that fire facilities layer. And then we can see that there are a lot of locations near a lot of these different points, which could mean that their fire severity could be at a high risk. And we do see a few of these points in large risk areas. And so overall, here we have our report created and we can view the different ratings of the different campgrounds and their safety. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Sebastian. So um, we saw how we could basically pull in the tabular data onto a map, mapped it. Let's map our business data, right? If Power BI can connect to a, a data set, we can map it. As long as it's got some type of spatial field in it, zip, area, um, address, uh, you know, um, state, something like that, lat long. Pull in other contextual reference layers for um, more information. Start to make that multi-layer map and spend some time authoring it so that it looks beautiful and you can interact between the Esri map visual and the other Power BI um, visuals as well. So you can see the selections and filters uh, across the different um, elements. Let's change gears here now that we've had a little bit of a deeper dive on those three products to talk about what's coming. Maps for Power BI, we have a release planned around June-ish time frame uh, this summer. And the the, the, this release's goal is to really um, focus on uh, streamlined experience consistent with what other Power BI um, visuals have. And that includes eliminating or um, getting close to eliminating that in-focus edit mode. If you noticed, that's where a lot 
during if you notice during Sebastian's demo, that's where the majority of the more advanced capabilities are. You have to go edit the uh, the visual, and not everybody realizes that that's even there. So we're going to try to push that down into the experience of dragging and dropping into the field wells. Excuse me, and as well as working on our uh, improving our defaults. Later after that, down in 2020, we want to uh, support Power BI Report Server, Power BI Embedded, and Power BI Published to Web. We know this is extremely important, and um, those are some of the, the top things that, that are on our radar. Let's move on to Maps for Office. So we just had a release of uh, Maps for Office um, mid-March, March 17th, I believe. And that was a quality and performance improvement release so if you are using maps for office and you haven't gotten that yet really encourage you to check to to, to get it because there's some uh, important stuff in there later this year we are planning to implement um, some new technology to make really uh, make the product be more performant faster quicker work better with larger data sets and intuitive mapping uh, features and SharePoint so like all software uh, SharePoint has evolved and is using some newer technology especially with their um, online or, or cloud deployment option and we want to align with that really leverage some of that newer tech but to do that we need to rewrite the SharePoint parts and that's what we're going to do new sh modern SharePoint parts um, initially only available in the SharePoint online version and you're not going to see this like one big release of just being completed, but we're going to chip away and add gradual releases and functionality to that. And, um, you know, with a, an overarching goal of being able to provide authors with more flexibility for creating dashboard like pages and interactivity between the different web parts. With that, uh, appreciate the time that you spent with us today and really uh, hope that that was beneficial. I'd encourage you to check out our Esri product pages and help documentation for much, much more information. Have a good day. Bye.